Uh, moving on to more complex ones. Uh, this one here, uh, a, new, a New Systematic Theology of the Christian Faith is by Dr. Robert Raymond. I'm always nervous of books that have new in the title. Well, yeah, so am I. <laughs> Uh, whether he actually chose that title or not is another question. He possibly didn't. But uh, the publishers, uh, who are Thomas Nelson, may have chosen it. Of often authors don't get to choose their titles. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, it's an editorial prerogative. So occasionally you'll get editors who have got to fund the thing and distribute the thing, and, or the publishers do, and they often have the final word on a title, so there you go. It we won't may, hold it against. It, 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 may, it may not be Robert <laughs> Raymond's fault. You know, he but might, have, he might have called it something very boring, <laughs> and they decided to uh, somehow or other jazz it up to sell it. So it's not a new theology. No, it's not a new theology, and <laughs> I think the thing about uh, Raymond is that Raymond is very comprehensive in the way in which he writes. He's deeply respectful to past traditions, so he'll recognise. Uh, people from other faith traditions, that is, within the Christian, Christian church, uh, and recognise when they've made significant contributions. Okay. Okay? So, for example, I, I'm, I don't know that he necessarily quotes uh, Pope Leo here, but, uh, for example, somebody like Pope Leo, who wrote a, a particular letter to uh, a man called Flavian, uh, an emperor, uh, wrote his famous tome about the person of Christ mm. and it is a brilliant exposition of the doctrine of Christ or Christology. Right. And, uh, you know, Raymond's the sort of person who is respectful of those things and can appreciate truth wherever it's found, uh, but he does obviously, uh, well, he is uh, a Presbyterian theologian and is a confessional theologian. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the filters that he puts on everything is whether it fits within the confessional framework mm -hmm. of the church, and particularly the great confessions of the church. He also uh, stands in the tradition of John Calvin. Right. So he's, he's, uh, he acknowledges Calvin's influence in theology and also in Christian devotion, so that comes to the fore. And uh, he's also a follower of, or at least he stands in the school of people like Van Til as a presuppositionalist. But having said all those things, uh, the great strength of this book, I think, is that it is confessional. It is basically exegetical. And he goes back and examines the uh, te important oh, texts in the light of Greek and Hebrew. And he gives, I think, a fairly balanced view of things. Uh, obviously, no one's ever going to agree with every point that yeah, a yeah. theologian makes, but I think it's the general contribution that he makes, and I think anybody who uh, reads a book like this is going to be a better preacher, a better theologian, and have a deeper appreciation uh, for the contribution of learned Christians and scholars uh, outside their own tradition, mm -hmm. but also for those within the tradition as well. So, um, wonderful. I thought that was a very good book and a helpful book.